Tokyo Sandboat Tour. Tour. So if you look off to the right hand side, you can see where the American Narrow section ends and where the river widens out quite a bit. And that's how it stays for a very long time, all the way up into Montreal, Quebec City, and eventually in the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of the St. Lawrence. And we'll see that way more once we get closer to Canada here. Uh, this is such a small section of the river, and there's so many different islands. And these islands were all formed about 12,000 years ago off of the glaciers, glacier movement. And some islands actually have holes in the middle of them that were drilled straight down due to the ends of glaciers and the water just tapping on the rock. Um, not in the section of the river, but more towards the center castle, about nine miles down the river. To our left, we have the regional Coast Guard station there. There is a sunken ship off the Coast Guard docks. It's 640 feet long, and it's known as the Roy of Jogger. This home off to our left, the seawall here on Mount Yad, the spy house. Just kidding. This is Hopewell Hall. It was owned by William Browning. He manufactured Union Civil War uniforms. It was then purchased by George Bull himself. It was a wedding present to his granddaughter, Mrs. Clover Cole Fair. Next up, we have Coleman Island. It was once owned by George Coleman. He was the inventor of the sleeper style rail car. George Pullman was very good friends with Ulysses S. Grant, President of the United States. I think he's the 18th President. He was housed President Ulysses S. Grant on Pullman Island, where there was no structures on there for a week's vacation. So now you can say the U.S. President tented out on the island himself. Back there on Wells Island, you'll see the green roof of the yellowish tan building. That is the Thousand Islands Country Club, the one that we talked about earlier with oh, Frederick and Nelly Frazier and the Windy Rock. Nice 18-hole golf course, a four-star restaurant, and a nice little yacht boat there. The next island here, now the island, as we go by, notice the stone pillars that sit on the first floor of Nami Island on the home that's Anchorage granite, so it makes up a lot of the riverbed and most of the islands here. And those pillars are held solely in place by the weight of the second and third floors of that home. That's what the architects say. Oh, wow. Next up we have Friendly Island, which was once owned by Paul Quackenbush, and Dr. Van Meter. He was the founder of Empire Airlines, which was bought out by American Airlines. He also had a smaller company known as Empire Boat Line. This is one of three sister ships. Now some people say friendly island is so friendly that it cuts its way back in My jokes are only going to be recording them. Some might even call them offensive. Nope. On next map we have St. Elmo Island. Large white anchor there. St. Elmo is the patron saint of all sailors. And the anchor is used to commemorate all of the sailors' lives lost here on the St. Lawrence River. The house up top is a reconstruction of the original. Put the boat house to your right. This is an original structure from the early 1900s. Just behind the boat house, you're going to notice another whitish tan building with a ground roof, also on Bell's Yard. That's the Swiss Chalet. Just to house these Swiss architects that are in the construction of the building. Currently a condominium that people kind of shared out. Now, the next three islands in sequence are Florence, Bell, and Imperial. And this signifies the end of Billionaire's Road. Now, we get closer to the highlight of our trip, which is the deep old castle of Trouble. I want to give you guys some context about who George was and why he built this castle in the world. So George, he was a Prussian man, which is now modern day Germany. He lived in the United States at the age of 13 years old. Some people might say 14. We don't really know what historical records. And he was raised to be a chicken farmer. The problem is he landed in New York City. Chicken farming is not a very big practice there. 
So he decided to become a dishwasher at a small and local hotel. Throughout the years he stayed in the industry, worked his way up the ladder, eventually taking him to Philadelphia, where he became the owner of the Bellevue Stratford Hotel. And then after that, he received such good attention uh, for the Bellevue Stratford, he became the sole proprietor of the Walmart Historia Hotel in New York City, which is currently under renovation, but it's still there today. He purchased this island in 1897 from a congressman named E.K. Hart. He probably changed the name of the island from H.A. Hart's after E.K. Hart's last name to H.E.A. Hart's and decided that he was going to build his castle for the end of his life, Louise. Uh, just one year prior to purchasing Hart Island, George actually purchased a smaller island just to the left. It's called Just Room Enough, and he built that castle for the second level of his life. His mother in law. All jokes said, Just Room Enough is owned by a family in Hawkins, Virginia. So, first you'll see the entrance arch, or the Arch of Honor, inspired after the Arc de Trio in Paris, France. Next up, we have the Ulster Tower, also known as the Children's Playhouse. Realistically, it was George's man cave. It's the only building that George has ever stayed overnight on the island. And inside, you'll find a two-lane bowling alley as well as a small theater where he would hire actors from New York City to come for him and his friends. The castle itself has 122 rooms, 365 windows, one for each day of the year. The second floor was built specifically for the Bull family to their specification. But if we never lived inside the castle, we'll get to wild in a moment. Just to the right, you'll see a tall cylindrical tower with a cone-shaped roof peeking through the trees. That's the Dove Cove, or the Henry on the island. George was into collecting exotic birds, and that's where he would have stored all of them. To the right of that, you'll see some white statues. That's the side of the garden, where a lot of the weddings on the island take place. Currently a five-year wait, so if anybody wants to get married in six years, let me know. I'll go to the neighborhood with just to the right of that, we also have a smaller footbridge attached to a smaller castle building. That is the powerhouse and the pump house. That's where the generators were located on the island. Let's get past the pump house. You can see another gigantic building quite in the distance between Harbor Island and Pop Island. That's the yacht house. You'll see the gigantic tall doors. That's where he used to keep some of his steamships. As well as his houseboat there and a smaller building, which was known as the La Duche. I probably pronounced that wrong. But it's in the Antique Boat Museum in Clayton, New York. So you can tour that. I think we have a couple more days here. And he also used to put all of his race boats that he would race here in the region. And that um, boat house there. They're all labeled PDQ, which stands for Penny Dog Boat. Now, construction on the island began two years after purchasing it in 1899, and the castle was set to be completed in 1904. In 1902, just three years ago, the island received a telegram. It read, Everyone who's laid on the field, all work must stop, and all the daily island in the United States. E.J. Noble received the island as a part of a greater land deal from George Bull, and he also had no use for the castle. Just sat there for many more years, all the way up until 1977, when the Noble family sold it to the Thousand Island Bridge Authority, who is a non-profit organization for one U.S. dollar. And they've been working ever since to restore it back to its 95% condition rate in 1992. Stinky out here.
until the next one.